Hepatocyte is a highly metabolically active cell. Storage of a pathological material is therefore a common feature of many liver diseases. Hepatocyte can store miscellaneous substances such as fat, bile, iron, glycogen or various proteins. The reason can be an increased supply of the material, blockage of its drainage or damage of the cell itself, leading to a cell dystrophy. Deposition of a small amount of any substance is a non-specific finding accompanying various diseases. On the other hand, larger deposits of any material affecting a big portion of the liver may point to a specific disease. In this video, we will discuss storage of fat. Storage of fat in a cytoplasm of hepatocytes is referred to as hepatic steatosis or fatty liver. The fat can be stored as a single droplet or several large droplets dislocating nucleus of the cell. This kind of steatosis is called macrovesicular. You can see it in the picture together with microvesicular type of the steatosis, which will be discussed in a minute. Macrovesicular steatosis reflects a slower, long-term process. It usually begins in the centrilobular region and progresses towards periportal zone. The most common diseases associated with macrovesicular steatosis are obesity, type 2 diabetes and alcoholic hepatopathy. We tend to group those diseases into two categories, alcoholic liver steatosis and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Morphology of the given diseases is basically the same, and the clinical setting is necessary to determine a specific diagnosis. Apart from that, steatosis also develops as a result of chronic liver hypoxia. An example of that are patients with chronic right-sided heart failure. Remember so-called nutbag liver. If the fat is stored in the form of multiple small droplets, with centrally placed nucleus, we use the term microvesicular steatosis. This subtype is more dangerous <gasps> since it usually reflects a disease with faster progression, such as intoxication or various metabolic disorders, for example, congenital mitochondrial defects or patients with Ray syndrome. Both alcoholic steatosis and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease may progress to steatohepatitis. Much like steatosis, we subclassify these diseases into alcoholic steatohepatitis and non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, NASH. Again, proper clinical setting is necessary for the exact diagnosis. Microscopically, steatohepatitis is defined as a combination of steatosis, inflammation and hepatocyte damage, ranging from hepatocyte swelling to a necrosis. The inflammation is usually a mixture of lymphocytes, neutrophils and eosinophils. Such mixed inflammation differs from a mostly lymphoplasmacytic inflammation seen in chronic hepatitis. In the course of the time, fibrosis may develop. Such fibrosis usually starts as pericellular, forming so-called chicken wire pattern. As time passes, it may progress into septal fibrosis, which you can see in the picture, and later into cirrhosis. In case of alcoholic steatohepatitis, we can also find so-called Mallory's hyaline, or mallory dank bodies. This amorphous eosinophilic material in the cytoplasm of hepatocytes is in fact a clump of damaged intermediate filaments as consequence of alcohol toxicity to the cytoskeleton of hepatocytes. Apart from alcoholic steatohepatitis, these bodies often appear in cholestatic disorders since the stagnant bile has a toxic effect on the hepatocytes as well. Finally, we need to stress that many congenital metabolic disorders may also manifest as hepatopathy and storage of the pathological material, including fat, as a common feature. However, this topic goes beyond the scope of this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below.
and stay tuned for more videos about liver pathology.